Hey everyone, Alex of BP Auto Sports here for another super video. So, to state the obvious, the car looks a little bit different than it did in the previous video, but we'll get into that later. Uh, what we're going to be working on today, let me get the hood propped up here. So what we're working on today is we're going to take this little flange that I had made there, the flange that I had made here, and we are going to make the two water necks for the cooling system on the car. Now, if you remember the last video that we did involved mounting a radiator in the rear of the car. Now, plans change, that is no longer the plan, which we'll go over why the concept of the build has changed uh, later on in this video. But for right now, we're going to start working on the water necks and this upper water neck will be kind of interesting because we are going to integrate a fill pot into it rather than having it just be some sort of a tube with a bend and an AN fitting on it, or an AN weld bung rather. So let's go ahead and I guess start kind of eyeballing this a little bit or start designing it and we'll move forward from there. Now I have this piece of three inch 11 gauge aluminum tubing that is four inches long and this will serve as the body for the fill pot. So fill pot, if you guys are not familiar with them, something like this. It is a point where the fill cap and radiator cap can go on a cooling system with a radiator that does not have a cap on it. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of tubing and it'll mount somewhere in this area, giving enough clearance to the fittings on the two fuel rails enough clearance to the cam on the throttle body and enough clearance to the belt and the ability to still get the cap on and off with it being the highest point in the system for easy bleeding. So I know that's <laughs> quite a few quite a few criteria that it has to fit into but not the end of the world and uh, I guess we'll start with getting this roughly placed. All right I'm all set up to make the cut on this piece of tubing here. So this piece will serve the same purpose or what I'm doing is cutting the notch to fit it around the side of the fill pot body right there. So all that I'm doing is I have my three inch hole saw and the drill press, have this positioned so it'll take a radius notch out of this. And once this is cut and cleaned up and everything, it'll fit right at home on the side of our pot body right there. So I'll go ahead and make this cut and we can start moving forward. Okay, so we take this piece in here. Actually, the length of it seems to be just about what I was looking for. It should leave depending on how I rock it, plenty of clearance for the fitting on the top fuel rail. Bottom fuel rail is pretty much a non-issue and it still leaves plenty of clearance for the throttle cam to do its thing. So I think I'll go ahead and probably see if I have a fitting that fits this fuel rail just to double check, but it appears as though we are definitely on the right track. Now, with our fitting in place, we still do have plenty of room for this fill pot to sit where it needed to sit at. Now I'll go ahead and take a permanent marker and mark out the angle that this tube needs to be cut at to match the plane of the side of the head. Once that is done, I can take that flange off, I can tack this piece of tube to that flange and we can start figuring out the rest of the placement for the fill pot body. So let's go ahead, make our mark on this tube and keep moving forward. We have the tube tacked to the flange there, we have the pot body here and placing it in its home. It looks like it's tight to that fitting there and I may end up replacing the ORB fitting coming out of the rail there to one of the tight radius forge deals. But the pot sits exactly where I wanted it to be. So let's move that in a little bit, a little more clearance to that line. And yeah, there we go. Happy with that. So I'll now pull that flange back off, weld the tube to the flange fully, 
And at that point, I think it will be time to prep and weld the pot body up. And then we can figure out the other side with the actual 16AN fitting on it. And this piece should be pretty much done at that point. So let's go ahead, get that flange welded up, keep moving forward. All right, so you saw we have the flange welded for the fill pot, and let's take a look at it on the side of the engine. So it fits in there nicely. You can see you have a decent amount of clearance to that fitting. The fitting can thread on and off the way that it is, and weld didn't come out too badly if you can see it down in there. So that portion of it's done, and now, like I said, we're going to move on to building the actual pot body itself. So I just went ahead and I cut out the bottom and the top of it. The bottom is a solid three inch circle. The top is a three inch circle with a hole cut in the center of it for the radiator fill neck. Now I was able to make the top and the bottom of the tank with some simple jigging on my drill press and a hole saw that has about half of its teeth missing. But it still cuts so no reason to change it out just yet. So I am going to use my welding positioner to weld the pot together. And what this does is spins around in a circle. It's just a turntable essentially that has speed adjustment, it has forward and reverse adjustment or selection rather. And this allows you to spin the piece as you're welding it so you have one continuous weld around a circular weldment as opposed to having a million stops and starts as you are building the piece. So once the top and the bottom of the pot cool, I'll go ahead and I'll get them prepped and then we can tack them, throw them in the positioner and get the pot body itself finished. All right, I have the positioner all set up here. And the way that it works, you have the pedal that you actuate with your foot. And I'll turn the speed up just for demonstration's sake. Like I said earlier, you have a forward and reverse switch. So press the pedal down. It spins. You change the direction, it spins the opposite way. So with this knob, you kind of figure out what the correct speed of rotation is for the particular way that you weld. It takes a little bit of playing around with to figure out what works best for you. The same as anything else with welding. There is no umbrella clause to make everything easy for everybody. It's all individual. But went ahead and I did tack up the bottom section of the pot body. And as you saw, this thing's still hot. I welded the inside of the radiator fill neck. And I weld these on the inside. Let's see if I can flip this without burning my hand. Success because on the bottom side of where the overflow fitting would go to, if I were to weld around that, it would probably not leave enough room to get the fitting in or the weld would get up in the threads. So once those two pieces cool down a bit, I will throw the fill pot body in the positioner and we'll buzz that bottom cap in, cool it off, weld the top cap on, and at that point we can go ahead and figure out its positioning off of this neck here. You can mark out the space that needs to be cut out of the pot body, mark it out to where it needs to be welded in, and then weld that up. pot welded up as you guys saw. 
came out pretty nicely. It's real nice to use that positioner when you're doing round welds like this, as if you can do it all in one shot, you don't have any stop start points, any chance for abnormalities in the weld, and it makes it look much nicer and more professional. So at this point, now that we have this welded up, I can go ahead and figure out where exactly I want the fitting on it to point and mark out the location of the tube on the rear to accommodate that. So I'll go ahead and get that marked. Once it's marked, I can go ahead and punch a hole in it. Once the hole's punched and I grind it a little bit to get it to fit properly, go ahead and weld the flange in the tube to the fill pot. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. Got the tube and the flange welded to the fill pot body it's installed on the car so let's take a look at it and there we are so same as before test my fitting the fitting has plenty of clearance to that tube you can see it can still move around and plenty of clearance to timing belt and everything else obviously the throttle cam is very far away from that so now that that portion of it's done, the last thing to do is to put the tube stub with the actual 16AN male weld on fitting onto its tube and onto the fill pot body itself. So we need to repeat the same process we did before essentially, and that is coping the piece of tubing to fit the outside radius of the fill pot body. Once that radius is coped, I can cut the tube down to size, I can weld the number 16 fitting onto it, and then I can mark out, cut a hole, and weld that onto the fill pot body itself. So, let's go ahead and start doing that portion of it. have our fitting welded to the tube stub and I opted to not use the positioner for this as there isn't a great way to isolate the threads without potentially having them arc out if you arc the threads out then maybe a thread file could save it otherwise you just mulched the uh, mulch the male side of the fitting so now I need to figure out location for it I think from a little bit of poking around I'm going to put it parallel to the throttle body. I think that gives it a nice clean look. So I guess I'll go ahead, mark it out there, then punch the hole in the side, clean it up, weld this on, and this part will be done. So probably skip the whole cutting process and just get over to the welding. So I'll see you guys over the bench. pot all done let's install it on the car let's take a look at it and that came out sweet it's pretty much exactly what I had envisioned you can see that it sits pretty much parallel with the throttle body this will give me a good run to whatever or to wherever the fitting ends up on the new radiator it clears the hood and it looks cool oh and obviously it clears the fuel rail as we checked probably about 10 times so I guess now would be the time to address the elephant in the room and that is 
Why are the carbon fenders off? Why is there an air to air intercooler core in there? And what are the changes to the build and why are they being implemented? So I guess let's go back to the previous video when we mounted the rear mount radiator. So I mentioned in that video that in order to get it ducted properly so it would actually cool and force air up through the radiator, I guess let's take a walk out back. I can show more easily that way. But in order to do so, I would have had to cut out all of this parachute linkage or parachute bracketry rather and cut holes in the rear bumper or cut more holes rather and built a complex duct setup that would come up through a plastic window you know similar to what you'd see in a drift car or rally car something that has or a more common application for a rear mount radiator and the more that i thought about it i was adding complication to the build essentially just for the sake of adding complication to it this entire build has been for lack of a better description kind of my idea of my masterpiece taking all the knowledge that i've accumulated over the time that i've been building this car and trying to implement it into this build and i'm still doing that but i'm just pulling back a little bit and i'm reducing the complication of it in the areas where it will just benefit the project as a whole so in adding to that why there are no longer carbon fenders on it this is going more street mode now in the past few iterations of this build i have always had body panel exit exhausts i had hood exit i've had open down pipes which i guess wouldn't be body exit but they've always been short and more race oriented exhaust systems which have their place, but they are extremely loud and drony, and it kind of ruins the ability to drive the car and to enjoy it. And even though the setup is wild and racy and everything else, I still want to be able to street drive it. And it will still have insurance, still have tags, still have turn signals and minus wiper blades, but all of the things that make, at least in my mind, a street car a street car. So I didn't want to deal with constantly having exhaust fumes in the car, with having it be extremely loud, with having it be cumbersome to drive and operate, and essentially unenjoyable from my perspective. So I put the factory body panels back on it, and I also took the titanium exhaust off, as well as notching, or as well as having notched the engine plate as I do plan to run a full exhaust on it. Now it will be semi-complicated to get the downpipe done, but not the end of the world. And I have it designed in such a way that I won't have to reduce tubing size from five inch to something smaller and restrict the turbo and maybe cause a back pressure issue or cause it to not be happy in its operation. So. I went and I trimmed a little bit of the bumper out. Some more of it needs to be trimmed to get it a little bit farther away from the turbine housing. But if we look at it from the front, we have just the perfect amount of turbo peeking through. And with redoing the radiator setup, that necessitated doing a new intercooler or building a new intercooler for it. As if you guys remember previously, the big air to water sat in this area here. If I am putting a radiator up there, the air to water had to be ditched. And if I'm ditching the air to water, to further simplify the system, I decided to go back to a normal air to air intercooler. So this core that's in here now is one that I just had sitting around to kind of get a rough idea of sizing of the new air to air intercooler. And we'll do a video when I it's or when it is time to build that, and it should be pretty cool. Now, progress that I have made on the car that I did not film. Obviously, I showed the notching of the engine plate for the alternator to swing up into place. I did get the dry sump tank mounted, which I'll show a couple of photos of the build process of that. Came out pretty interesting. It is 
solid as I shake that the whole car wiggles on the lift. And the final piece that I've gotten accomplished just kind of poking around with the parts that I have here is I was able to get the ECU mounted. So it mounts two points in rear, one point in front up on the firewall, and those elongated nuts that are on there are just mock nuts for the time being, and those will obviously get changed out. And after the ECU, there is one more piece that I almost forgot, and that is the exhaust. Now I had built this five inch aluminum exhaust, which I'll put a sound clip in here. built it for a previous turbo setup when I still had the 80 millimeter turbo and still had the factory we were in that didn't have an auto and what have you. So there was a bit of hammer persuasion, we'll call it, that needed to be done to get the exhaust fit on there. And there will still be some modification necessary when it is time to build the downpipe. But it fits in there. It fits actually fairly nicely now. And I'll end up building a muffler for it to kind of tame it down a little bit and make it even more manageable to the ears and not such a, uh, not so cumbersome to drive like we talked about earlier. So I know it's a bit of a departure from what the initial intent was with this build, but it will make things easier, more serviceable, more functional, more effective. And it will make me able to get it done more quickly and hopefully out and racing in my lifetime. So hopefully that answers a few questions. I know it is maybe not as extreme as it was before, but trust me, the whole turbo setup and engine and everything else is there. It will just look a little bit different. So I think that will about wrap up this video. Um, I was not able to get this lower water neck done as I'm still waiting on fittings, but those should be here in the next couple of days and I'll knock that out and then we'll do something else for the next video. So until then, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and until then, we'll see you later.